continuing our series, Things That Hinder. And we have the baggage to represent the things that we often carry around unnecessarily and unfortunately for far too long. Gail and I are planning our first really big trip. We love traveling and we're planning this for later in 2022. And I just made airline reservations and uh, you know how that works. Uh, if, if they're not raising the ticket prices, they're raising everything else. And the way it used to be is we could kind of take all this stuff with us and they'd let us take it free. Well, it's not free anymore. <clears throat> In fact, we can take this for free. Okay? Praise God for that. This is going to cost me 30 bucks if I take it. If I take these, it's going to cost 30 and then an extra 50. I won't tell you what airlines. <laughs> uh, all I want to say is there's a cost to carrying unnecessary baggage. Okay? It, it, nobody can make you release this. That's a personal choice. But I'm telling you, if you make the choice to carry this around the rest of your life, it's going to cost you. And I'm not talking 30 bucks. I'm talking in things that matter for eternity. It's going to cost you any relational stress in marriages and family. It's going to cost you in ineffectiveness in your witness to the lost. It's going to cost us collectively as a church in not being as effective in our mission as we could be. So there's a heavy cost. And when I think about that, I just start weeding all that out. And we're only going to take what we can carry on. That's it. I don't have the money to throw away like that. And I'm going to do without. Well, today I've entitled the message, Failure to Listen Hinders. Maybe in one of these bags that you've been carrying around is the failure to listen. And by the way, We've all been there. Let's turn in the book of James to a, a text that you've probably read before, maybe studied before. Chapter 1, starting in verse 19. James is a very practical writer, and here he's talking about listening. My dear brothers... And sisters, he's not using that term in a narrow sense. It's to all of us, all followers of Christ. Dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteousness or the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Let's pray together. Father God, we have all at some point in our life, and maybe for some of us many points in our life, where we have failed to listen. We have failed to listen to you. We have failed to listen to a spouse. We have failed to listen to a dear friend.
We have talked before we've listened. We've given an answer before we've listened. And Solomon in the book of Proverbs calls that foolishness. Father, forgive us for living so foolishly. For carrying around as part of our baggage this dysfunctional communication. Talk, talk, talk. Without ever hearing. Oh, we see it in politics and government. We see it in family systems. We see it in churches. And sometimes when we look intently into the mirror, we see it in ourselves. And Father, I pray that today we will not look at government and not look at families and not look at everybody else, but I'll look at me. Change my heart. Oh God. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listening is an art. It really is. We all can do it, but some people master it. We've all been there where someone is saying something to us, and we are working at trying to grasp what they are saying. We're trying to understand the meaning. We're trying to listen carefully so that we don't miss the point. But it's hard work. And some are better at it than others. And so my prayer today for myself and for you is that we would, like any artist, you go to the studio often, if you want to master the painting. And, and so we have to do this over and over again and work at it until we become better and better at listening. Listening is an art. Now what does the text tell us about all this? Well, first of all, it says be quick to listen. Now, I don't know about you, but I think our sinful human nature always defaults to quick to talk. I, I, I don't know. I, I think as I look at people, I love to watch people. Maybe that's why I did counseling for a while. I, I, I just love kind of getting into people's shoes and trying to figure out why they do what they do and how they do what they do. And I think what I see is that people are kind of wired by their sinful nature, not by God's design, but by the Genesis 3 fall of man design. They are wired to talk first and listen later. And so, if it's an art form, I have to learn how to hold my tongue and be quicker to listen. Make listening the default mode of my life. So, husband and wife sitting on a couch talking, make listening my default. Have you ever stood in front of somebody and you know that as you're talking, they're already shaping their response? Okay, you can see the motor turning. I've got a little foster grandkid. Oh man, can I read his mind just through his eyes. Oh, I had him in my lap the other day. And he was sitting there and he had just woken up for a nap. And it's the only time that he has at all settled down for a moment to be in your lap. And he's in my lap. And I start talking to him and his eyes are gone. Okay. He's not really hearing Grandpa. He's plotting trouble. <laughs> okay. But how frustrating it is you're standing in front of a person, you're sharing your heart, you're talking about something that's important to you, and, and they've already got the answer before they've heard what you said. Now be careful. We need to default to listening. We need to be quick, fast to 
Now listen. I don't know, even saying that in the English language sounds so foreign. Uh, and the reason it sounds that way is it's not natural. Uh, man, let me talk to you for a moment. We are fixers. That's a generalization. I know in our culture we've got to be careful not to make overgeneralizations. But I tell you what, throughout my experience, I find in my life and many men, we are fixers. So, our, our wife has something that's of concern, or they want to process, or they want to talk. And I won't call Gail for a testimonial here. Uh, but I cut it off at the pass because I already have the solution. Right? Men? We've got solutions, right? Well, we don't even know the problem yet, but we've got the solution. And what I've discovered is they typically aren't looking for solutions. They're looking for a listening ear. And we're not real good at that, man. So every one of us needs to learn to master the art of listening, but man, I'm picking on us today in particular. Let's really uh, zero in on this as something we can work on a little bit better. Sometimes the other person simply wants to express a feeling uh, a heartache. And I got the solution for your heartache before I've ever climbed into your heartache and understand your heartache. So we need to be a little careful. One of the toughest uh, graduate courses I ever took was listening. It was a required course in uh, the counseling degree that I was seeking. Whole semester on listening. Huh. What's that about? And so we would uh, have clients, and then we would uh, get permission to videotape and audio tape of the session, and then the professor would evaluate your listening skills. <laughs> oh, when you start zeroing in on it, and when you start thinking about it, you can do it. You can do it. And how important it is. Be quick to listen. Be slow to speak. You've heard the phrase, talk is cheap. Well, it's cheap because it's easy. It's easy to fill the void with words. Uh, I just challenge you, the next time you gather around a table with ten people for dinner, what happens when there's a moment of silence? Somebody fills the void. And the reason they do that is because there's an awkwardness about silence. It's so unfamiliar to many people that when it happens, they get a little bit nervous. And the way to fill that is to talk. And the talk that fills it is just chat. It's not valuable because the words haven't even necessarily been thought through, but I just don't like the silence. So I'm going to talk. If you're an introvert today, have you ever thought, you know, you're, you're in this conversation with another person, and the other person is talking and talking and talking, and then they're wondering why you're not talking. And so you turn to them and say, well, I would if you come up for air. <laughs> okay? Right? I mean, introverts need an air break. They need you to kind of take a pause, to put a comma so that they can get in. We're all different. We're all wired differently. But if we're always talking, we're going to miss the voice of God. And we're going to misunderstanding one another. Be slow to speak. Number three, be slow to anger. Now there's a certain order to this. I will never control my anger if I don't listen. And I'll never control my anger if I'm too quick to speak. 
So the order in scripture is very important. If a person has an anger issue, it's really a listening, speaking issue. We've got to get at the root cause, and God can help us, and, but it's an art form. Uh, I can't just give you a formula, you have to master the art. Um, you know, I'm not Bob Ross, I can't say, hey, you know, watch me and go home and do it. You know, it's not that easy. Because the painting you're trying to paint is a painting of Christ's likeness. Being more like Him. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Effective listening begins with looking intently into God's Word. Look at verse 22. Do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed. You want to be blessed in this area of your life? You want to stop carrying all the luggage of failure to listen? Then you have to look into the Word of God. It's like a mirror. And you can't just jump in front and run away. You have to jump in front and stand there. And you have to look intently. You have to really ponder what it is that you see. You need to ask the real hard questions. God, show me my wicked ways. When we stand before the mirror every morning or every evening, we don't want to see any flaws. But we do. Uh, we don't want to stay there too long and look for all of the, the, the newest wrinkles and, and, and all of the things that reflect that we are aging. We would rather kind of do a quick look just to get the hair in place or whatever it is you're doing. But when it comes to the Word of God, if you only want God to encourage you today, if you only want God to kind of hold your hand today, but you don't want God to penetrate your heart and discover your sin today, then we have an issue. Hey, buddy. I really got to go we, to the bathroom. We, we have a new preacher. This is our... Uh, hi, buddy. High five. No? Tell him to come here. Can I show him where it is? You want to? Yeah. Here, I'll. I got him. Here. Oh, it's great to have him. No? She'll show you. <laughs> oh, he's cute as a button. Than our last preacher. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> All right. Are you intently looking at God's Word? Intentionality is not in our human nature. If it was, Walmart would not have a bunch of Snickers bars at the checkout counter. But they know that Steve loves chocolate. So they put it there and I grab it. Life can be impulsive. But I tell you what, when we do church and when we think about our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot afford to be impulsive. 
We have to be intentional. Stand in the Word of God for a while. Now, if you want to know whether or not you're standing in the Word of God right now, I want you, if you're married, to ask your spouse. If you're not married, ask somebody who maybe knows your daily routines. Ask them how many hours you spend watching television and how many hours in the Word of God. That's not a criticism. I mean, that's me sometimes. But that's a wake-up call. The average American spends 6.5 hours in front of the television. But we would say we don't have time for anything. <laughs> well, we don't have time for anything because we've chosen to use our time that way. Uh, I don't spend 6.5 hours in the Word of God a day. I'm not as intentional as I could be. Now, I'm not suggesting you go home and start setting aside 6.5 hours. I'm just saying, stand in the mirror and look and ask, God, show me what my ways are like. Because I'm going to be busy today, I'm going to go about my life, and I'm going to miss that. I'm going to think I'm okay when I'm not. I'm going to think I'm traveling light when I'm really bogged down with a load that you've called me to give to Christ. Effective listening begins by looking intently into the Word of God. We will never do what God wants until we hear what God says. We are deluding ourselves. We are fooling ourselves if we ever think we, Schroyer Road Baptist Church, will do the Word of God unless we hear what he says. I will delude myself as a husband, as a grandpa, as a pastor, as a friend, if I ever think I'm going to be a doer of the Word of God if I don't spend time listening to him. I am afraid the younger generations are going to pay a price for having the earbuds in as long as they do, by having the technology in front of their face as long as they do. Because no matter what's on there, they are being fed. Okay, They are being fed with all kinds of stuff. And we need to make sure that we're being fed with the Word of God. You know, this generation right there, we as a church have a responsibility to. A responsibility to model what it's like to allow the Word of God to take over our lives and to be a follower of that Word. So, where are you at today? How is the uh, luggage in your life? What, I mean, how many pieces are you carrying around? And what's in that? If one of those things today is a failure to listen to God, to His Word, and to one another, you've got to get rid of that. Because that's going to hold you back in every area of your life. Will you join me in prayer? Father,